it offers an escape from you know the busy, hectic, somewhat depressing <laughs> life um, that we humans lead, and it gives us an alternative reality where you know our only objective is to have fun, not like please anyone or rush around just being stressed out. That game Portal that just came out, you have this gun and it can open portals on any flat surface. If you want to get a blue portal, it will shoot the other side, you get an orange portal. And they open up, and you can walk through them and you can see through them. It's this visual and physical link. So it's basically this first person puzzle game. And there's all these obstacles you have to get around and stuff, all these weird terrains and rooms and tests and like a crazy computer and a big final boss battle and all that. And it's really fun. And it uses technology that, uh, well, I mean, it's been around for a couple of years now, but this is the first time it's ever really been implemented as a, like a gun where you can put the portal wherever you want, sort of thing. And it's really fun and it's really innovative and it has a really you know, quirky story thing to it. So I like it. My whole kind of existential philosophy is built around the fact that elves live forever uh, in World of Warcraft. And the fact that we humans don't. And so I, I think. I think video games, um, and I mean especially with Warcraft for me, give me this philosophical view on life that's very, um, I don't know, very optimistic. As in, it's kind of like a, everything will be okay, because <laughs> you die and you resurrect yourself, and you know, you're not, I don't know, it, it goes back to the whole, I want to escape reality thing. Have you ever had any meaningful or philosophical thoughts that were inspired by a game? No. Never. And no, I'm not that nerdy. If I need philosophy, I'll get it from somewhere worthwhile. I mean, the only the only video games that really do have a good story and meaning and all that shit through them is like RPGs. And uh, I haven't really played too many of those. So, and even then, I'm not. I wouldn't be that easily influenced by a video game. Good games always have the most complex plotline possible for it to be understood and really valued by the players, I think. Um, I mean, World of Warcraft plotline is, is pretty intense, and you really have to... I mean, I, I got the strategy guide to try and understand what's going on in, in the plotline. Um, and so, I think, obviously it has to be complex, but able to be understood, and um, I think it has to be separated from real life. Jack and I would talk, and with Ambrose, endlessly about, you know, our plans. It was like we were talking about our college plans, but they were our World of Warcraft plans. Like, you know, what, what we're, we're literally, I, I mean, I've literally mapped out the next four years of my life um, playing World of Warcraft and saying that, you know, okay, well, by the end of this year, I'm going to get to level so-and-so, and, you know, I'm going to get this level of skinning, and I'm going to do this and this. Um, so, I mean... It really, it does not only create conversation, it controls <laughs> controls you almost. <laughs> okay, for one thing, I like a game to have good graphics. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be, you know, fancy 3D effects and all that, but it has to be, you know, decent. I don't want some shitty, you know, sprites all over the place that are just reused. A game also has to have a good basis behind it. I mean, Portal is really cool because it's such a unique idea, and, um... Actually, there was one game made before it that was pretty much the same thing, but the people who made Portal were those same people. So, it's the same, it's the same people making the same game, sort of. Um, I like first-person shooters, but it's only the ones that have, like, a good, you know, storyline, plotline. Like, if it's just go kill a bunch of aliens, it's probably just going to be a cheap knockoff in some other game. Then you have a game like Half-Life 2, and it has this really engaging, really interesting storyline that slowly revealed to you across, you know, each game. And that's really good. And also I like simulation games. But anything that's like a model of a real life system, I can tweak, you know, change a little bit. That's pretty cool. It's, it's you know, something that's challenging, but also just lets me play around with it. That's something that I really like in the games, like a sandbox mod, like Gary Mod. Gary Mod is that game. It's like it's like an engineering simulation. You can just spawn objects and like build machines out of them using the physics engine of the game. That's, there's no there's no like goal in the game just to build stuff and have fun just mess around. Gary's mod has definitely challenged me to think just as much as any, you know, mathematics course I've ever taken. 
it's, it's really engaging. I've actually like, written out equations and crap to just, you know, try and figure out the best way to build something in King Gary's mod. And, uh, yeah, it's a really amazing sandbox sort of thing. I call it sandbox sort of games. Like, Spore is going to be a really cool game when that comes out. Because basically, have control over a virtual universe and virtual evolution and all that, so it's I like things that model the real world, even if it's not a completely realistic model, as long as it's something that can be, you know, you can play around with it. I, right now, think that my conversations with people about video games are obviously, uh, in, they're similar in the fact that they really connect um, me to a person that I, I don't know, but I, you know, you can tell people's, you can basically tell a person from the video games they play. And, and the lack of the video games thereof that they played. We're not really at the state where we have an AI that's as good as a human player, obviously, for any game. So it's really great to have other people, because it's challenging and you can talk to them, so you don't feel that as dirty. I mean, especially in, in Gary's mod, I mentioned that earlier, it's really fun to enter a server and build stuff for the people, and show off what you can do, and like, work together and collaborate on something. That's really fun. It's like... It's like talking about your life without all the depression. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's about, it, you can talk about, oh yeah, every, you know, there's nothing, you can have things go wrong in World of Warcraft, but it's not like it's going to get you down. I mean, it can get you angry a little bit, but you, you can talk, I can always talk to Jack about, oh man, you know, it wasn't that so great when we did this two-person quest and we did this teamwork and we had this communal bond and we, you know, shared some experiences, we shared some tears and some laughs. A lot of these games are certainly providing an outlet for creativity that didn't exist before. It's definitely a whole new medium. People make these huge backstories about their characters or World of Warcraft or whatever, so that's, you know, it's, it's, it's this new channel for creativity to flow, if you will. It's kind of gay, but, you know, that's how it is. I mean, it's an opportunity to create something, to create an actual version of a world, which you couldn't do, you couldn't do that before the age of modern computer. So, definitely video games serve the creative force in that aspect. Well, I think it, it first of all, adds a completely new social element, which makes it a lot more fun. Because you feel like your progress, just like you know how you want to do things in real life, you really know you're doing it because of things in the game that are meant to you. Um, and obviously, your, your, your sample size for humanity is a lot smaller in a game than it is in real life, but you still feel like you're contributing something to the rest of the world in this case, to the rest of the World of Warcraft players. Even a game that maybe isn't that great a game, single player, can become an immensely popular and it's hugely fun game when it's multiplayer. And I mean, that's true of any of these MMOs, like EVE Online or World of Warcraft, any of these games, if they were single player, they would suck. And there are copies of World of Warcraft, but these cheap single player games, and they suck. They're really bad. It's like. World of Warcraft gameplay, but there's no multiplayer. The whole point of World of Warcraft or even other in this game is other people to interact with and have to make the experience fun. Because if you're like some lonely fat nerd who has no friends and no social life, you can have a social life. You can be a really cool, awesome paladin, leader of your guild, and have friends. Awesome. I think I play games that require, you know, thought before action. Um, games that obviously are reflective of an interesting subculture, as in, in this case, a non-existent one, uh, but, you know, a really, really complex and, I think, very cool um, world, another world. Um, obviously, there's other games, like sports games and shooting games, um, that <clears throat> require less thought and require less uh, persistence, and obviously it's still some, you know, somewhat arguably bad morals. Um, and not to say that all shooting games are bad, I mean, some, I think some World War II shooting games have taught me more about World War II than any class could ever. You, you can get the emotions of it, too. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad games out there, and they're, they are hurting some people. So it teaches you about, like, real-life teamwork, or or just being a component of something. Well, you'd think it would teach people that, but a lot of these nerds who, I mean, people who don't know that already aren't going to learn that from a video game, you know? 
Maybe they would, but they wouldn't be very good at it because they would have no real social skills. It'd only be like, I'll be the tank and you, you know, heal me. It doesn't work like that in real life. Yeah, you know, you learn about life. You really learn about life from video games. I'd say the biggest thing which kind of pisses me off sometimes is that I learn patience. I just keep going and, and you know, not give up. Which I think is a pretty valuable lesson on life, because once you give up on life, there's no, you know, starting over tomorrow.